In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do projection painting using Blender 2.3. This is one of two videos showing uh, hopefully the end results be the same but slightly different methods of attacking. So let's get into edit mode and get started. First thing we need to do is get into edge select mode and select the edges we need in order to unwrap this cube. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the painting, but rather I'm going to spend time showing you the process needed to do this operation. Alright, so we have the edges selected. Now let's mark seams so that we can do and unwrap. While we're in this on this page, should be the case, but I like to double check it. We'll assign the material to it to be sure it's assigned. I'm sure it was. And we need to add seven UV maps that we're going to use later. And we need to name them because we're going to be referring to them multiple times. Okay. Now, we're going to go, while we're here, we're going to go in and import a bunch of text files that we are going to paint from. These files are real simple uh, PNGs that I created just for this video, the simple mechanism here. Okay, we need to be sure to label these also because we are definitely going to refer to these multiple times. Notice that the uh, defaults on these things changed at some point in one of the recent releases to where they seem to be quite appropriate for at least my use. So we can take the defaults in this case. Okay, now that we've got all the stuff we need to do in advance, we'll go over to the UV editing screen layout. And I prefer to shut off the, uh, make it visible only. And we want to go into face mode here and pick all faces. All right. Now, down here, we want to pick which one of these UV maps, well, not this one, a specific set of UV maps. We're going to do uh, unwraps of these various ones. So, this one here, the first one, we're going to do a unwrap all, and we get the our friend, the T there. And associate with that one. So, we're done with this one. While I'm here, I want to make note that this show and hide faces, you may need to use this because when we start doing a couple more of the unwraps, you don't want to see multiple sets of these things on the screen. Right, so I'm going to use the go in order that 
see them here of the UV entries. And since we need back, we got to go to the back face of the cube, which of course is Control 1 to get to the back, and then right select to get to that one single face, U to unwrap, and project from view. So the rest of these are all going to be project from views. And then here we're going to choose the graphic that we loaded earlier. Press A and scale it a little bit. Oops. A to select it and then S to scale it a little bit. There we go. go to the bottom. So we need to go to the control 7 to get to the bottom of the cube. Right click to select the bottom face. You unwrap and it says already on project from view. So I'm going to go through those rather rapidly. And then pick the bottom image. That one. Front, front, front. Front. Here we're doing a little bit of editing to make it show up nice. Okay, now we've got all of the unwraps done. We can go back to the default entry, default uh, screen layout, and go into texture paint mode. And ignore that for a second. Go to slots. Let's stretch this window out a little bit so you can see what I'm entering here. Alright, we want to do painting mode from image and we need to create a canvas excuse me a canvas right and then for the UV map we're going to use the full unwrap UV map now we go to tools click here pick the clone brush clone from image UV map now we go through the individual entries Okay, so we're taking from the image, the graphic image, back to using the source of the UV map. So, of course, we have to go to the back side of this object, which is Control 1. Oh, while I'm at it, we pump the radius up and the strength up and accumulate up just to speed it up. Okay, there's the back. Bottom, 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 front, front, front,
Okay, now as we can see here, we've got the object properly painted on all faces. But we're not done, really not done yet. If you were, if you wanted to export this object as, say, a, the mesh here and import it into Second Life, you could say that you're done. And you go to the UV editing panel and you see now we've selected a canvas and a little star is there to say we need to save that thing. So we'll save image. We'll save it there. That thing on top of my previous versions. Okay, so at this time we could export the, the mesh, the cloud format and then import it into Second Life, for instance, and then it would not have a texture on it, and we would copy this texture into Second Life, and we'd be done. But, we're going to finish this up a little bit, and we're going to demonstrate some more stuff. Uh, basically, how to bake it. So, if we go here to, back to Let's go to edit mode, I guess is fine. And we go into shading and say it's a textured solid. It doesn't show properly, right? And if we look at the texture format, it doesn't show correctly. The material doesn't show. And the render is not going to show correctly. And the reason for that is several things, but primarily, if you remember, one of the things we did is we went into the, at the beginning, we took this particular material and we assigned the six different textures from it. Well, we didn't pick faces, we just assigned those things all to one material, so it cannot know which face to put it on, so it puts them on all of them. So we need to fix that part so that we can get a good, I mean, we can get a better look at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now I'm going to delete these uh, textures here. One at a time. Get them out of that mess. Oops. Did we get them all? Yes, we did. Okay. Got them all out of there. Now I'm going to add a new texture. Yeah, we could. I don't quite understand what this thing is for. Eh, it doesn't seem to hurt. So we're going to add a new texture. And for this, we're going to add that canvas that we created from our paint. Okay, there's the canvas. Now, in order for this to properly format on our cube, it, you see it's still not showing up. We need to redo the unwrap, or at least set the, up the unwrap for this thing. So, select all. We're going to select new here. It's kind of arbitrary which one we're going to pick. doesn't matter because we're not going to need this. Okay, select that whole guy. That's our friend the T again. Now I go back to default. And we should have a little bit better results now. Yes, we do. Okay, so you see now if we go to the material view, that would appear like some of them are showing, and the reason it's only some is because we've only got a single light there. So I think we can let's see if we can find the a button someplace here for ah, maybe it's under object view. If we could say shadeless. Yeah, I believe it is. Alright, so 
now we can go, we can see that our texture is showing, not there, but, or there, but it's showing in material. don't think it'll show in rendered either. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. So now we want to go to object mode. Get out of the rendered view here. Let's go to material mode. Okay. And is it shaded? I don't remember where it is now. There's an option that says you can we can turn off the uh, the the, the uh, shading so that the uh, the fact that we only have one light is not important, but it's not what I'm worried about right now. So what I need to do now is we want to do, since we've got the material and the texture set properly, we can now bake it. So go here, select bake, and then go to textures. If I've done this right, Right up here in the top, you'll see a little bar that shows the status of how it's baking. And so let's give it a shot. Bake. Hopefully we got it done correctly. Yes, looks like it's good. Okay, it is. Now, we go to solid. We can see all of our surfaces. And in solid, Texture, we see the ones that, as it's lit by the sun and the material. Ones there. So that we've now, if you export this object now from Blender as a cloud of file and then try to import it into Second Life, you'll see that the texture is on the device and one of the options in the export for Clada allows you to export the texture also so the import into Second Life will import the textures and the mesh at the same time of course it will charge you an extra 10 uh, lindens at the moment but it will get them all plus it so now you've seen how to do the bake unwrap. Alright, so this is the end of this first part video. And the second one will show pretty much the same thing, only I'm going to come at it from a slightly different viewpoint, adding the texture files in, in a different uh, spot in the video. And thank you for watching.